Hello, this is Gary Whiskey 6 Romeo Alpha Golf, and I thought I would take this opportunity to share with you my experience with uh, this Ubitix here that I had just put together. Um, my son got interested in FT8, and he went out looking for a looking for a transceiver, and he came up with a Ubitix which I had never heard of, and he bought one. And uh, he bought one for me too, so uh, Dad had to show him, uh, you know, that I could still do stuff too here. So I thought I would share my experience with you a little bit. I've seen some fantastic uh, Ubitix modifications on uh, YouTube. However, all I was looking for here was a, a simple CW FT8 QRP rig that um, might be an upgrade to my old HW7 Heath kit transceiver that I've had for about 30 years. So what happened here is <clears throat> I decided I should breadboard it to see if it worked before I got too far along or I ordered any uh, commercial cases for it. So I put it on a piece of wood. Wood's about eight, 11 inches long and it so happens to be 11 inches long because I used a strong tie back there which you build houses with. It had a lot of holes in it, made it easy to put together the thing for a tryout. However, it, it, everything worked so good I hated to back up, so then I just uh, cut up an old chassis that I had around, laying around, made a box around the original piece of wood, and that left me a lot of room to play around in here, and I just thought I'd tell you uh, some of the things that I did and what worked and what, and what went wrong, too. So first of all, uh, you've probably heard this is a Ubitix uh, version 4. <coughs> And what happened is uh, everybody says the audio is terrible and it won't drive a speaker. So my first challenge was to uh, improve the audio. So what I did is I went out and bought, for about six bucks, I got five of these little LM360 modules here, which I mounted right there. Mounted an 8-ohm speaker out of an old uh, PC uh, speaker. And uh, hooked it up to the output of the USB phone plug port. I had tried to hook it up to the to the uh, audio volume control in order to totally bypass the Ubitix audio but I had a lot of trouble with that so I found out the final solution was best to just hook it up to the phone jack on the front panel and uh, run it straight into the little module now the little module is very powerful. I have the gain set at like about 5% um, and it works beautifully. At first I used a uh, an external powered speaker and everything sounded really good. So after that I just decided to continue uh, using the Ubitix uh, audio output and just run it through this little speaker driver and uh, it works beautifully. It has more gain than you'll ever need and sometimes a strong signal comes in and it seems like I may just tear up the speaker. Next thing I did is I noticed the four transistors, the two N3904s in the driving that drive the IRF 510s got really hot. So uh, I was afraid they were going to burn out, they never did, but decided to put a little CPU cooling fan over the top of them and I have a switch in the back here so if I'm just listening, I can turn it off, and if I'm going to be doing some operating, then I just uh, turn it on. Okay, uh, the next thing that happened was I fired up my TS430 with about 60 watts within about my, with the antenna about three feet from the Ubitix antenna, which was a bad thing to do because it burned out Q90, which I think you've probably heard about on other YouTube videos it shorted out the emitter to the base and uh, so I changed out the surface mount to uh, thir to in uh, 3904 for a TO92 version which doubles the power capacity uh, my son did a simulation and it seems like the surface mount was going to be dissipating 300 milliwatts which is over the rated value for the surface mount version so I thought I'd just put in the 600 milliwatt version, which was the uh, the TO92 case, and it works fine. Okay, and then over here the fan created a little bit of noise on the audio, so I put a 100 microfarad capacitor in there, and that takes care of the hum that was created by the uh, the fan. The next significant thing was 
that the radio is just not set up for good break-in. If it's too slow, if you try to send an O, it'll make a W out of it. The relays are not fast enough to switch. There's also another problem that every time the relays switch, when they switch, you get a burst of uh, reflected power, which means there's some out-of-band uh, uh, transmission going on there, some, some spurs that are out of the band pass of the tuner. So if you throw the switch now with the new modification, it will put the thing permanently in CW keeps the relays quiet and makes a nice little CW rig out of it for for CW operators. Now it turned out that there was a a free pin on the Adreno A7 which was not being used so having not been able to figure out how to make a, uh, a simple switch on the board with a, with a some kind of an external switch uh, my son helped me with the software November 6 Mike November Echo and he found out that he could operate that pin A7 and if he ground pin A7 you can throw it into CW it'll stay there and you can get nice CW and you don't get the reflected power spikes or anything like that and then when you're finished transmitting you just go back to receive and that's how my little rig works, it works fine, just don't transmit high power next to the antenna or you may end up having to change Q90 just like I did. But it, it's a very beautiful little rig, it's a great CW little rig. Um, I'm not going to enhance it any further. Uh, I like it simple and that's just doing a great job. Um, if you're interested in these, the, the lines of code or the uh, that will enable this switch to convert it to uh, transfer it into uh, CW. Uh, I'll put my email address in the links so that you can uh, uh, maybe uh, ask me if you have any questions. Also uh, I'm listed in QRZ so you can find my email address there and uh, you could put in this software and if you're a CW operator it may be just a thing for you. And that's it. Thank you for watching. This is Whiskey 6 Romeo Alpha Golf 73.